Track and field celebrate a weekend of individual and team successes as they prepare for the A-10 championships. Hello, I'm Anna Gomez. And I'm Jake Smolinski. The men's tennis team appears dead upon arrival. Can they turn it around this season? You're watching LaSalle TV's home for Explore Athletics Sportsline. Welcome to Sportsline. This week, we have plenty of LaSalle sports action, including the devastating loss men's basketball had to VCU. And later, Rissa Del Puerto is on for this week's marquee matchup, and I got the chance to sit down with a long-distance phenom, Bradley Hurry. But first, let's take a look at what went down this past week for our athletes. It was a busy weekend for men's track and field as they competed in both the Penn State National Invitational on Friday the 29th and the John Covert Classic at Lehigh on Saturday the 30th. At Penn State, sophomore Justin Guerre finished in fourth place in the 200 meter, clocking in with a time of 21.85 seconds. Andrew Gersuch recorded a personal best in the mile, finishing in four minutes and 18.9 seconds in tenth. At Lehigh, freshman Ben Devenezia led the way for the Explorers, winning the 1,000 meter event with a time of 2 minutes and 34.7 seconds. Teammate Joseph Laconi also competed in the 1,000 meter, taking third and junior Chris Berry finished the 3,000 meter race with a time of 8 minutes and 54.45 seconds. Good for fourth place in a 28-man field. And now in her first collegiate attempt at the 200 meter, freshman Ariel Mitchell took fourth place for the women's team at the Covert Classic. Sophomore Amber Jenkins ran her best time to date in the 400 meter, taking third place among 30 athletes. And the efforts of newcomer Monet just in the 60 meter and 60 meter hurdle events placed her in both top tens. And as predicted here on Sportsline, LaSalle had great success in the long jump where Kalia Miller and Amber Jackson snagged the top two spots. Miller claimed first place in the event with a monster 5.76 meter jump, effectively setting a new program record. And at Penn State, Tayo Taylor was 0.3 seconds short of her collegiate best in the 800 meters, but she managed to take 10th place. Freshman Caitlin Puz showed her versatility by her first attempt in the mile for a 16th place finish in four minutes and 59 seconds. And the men's swimming and diving team competed in the last meet of their regular season on the 30th against UPenn. Hoping to end their season on a high note, the Explorers ultimately lost 165 to 123. Sophomore Fabian Bergman shined for LaSalle in the 100-yard backstroke race, taking first place in 50.60 seconds. Junior Jerry Gavra also performed well for the Explorers, placing second in the 100-yard freestyle race. In diving, C.J. Gimple missed the first place in the one meter event by taking a small margin of uh, taking a small margin for second place in 272.77 points, just 0.88 points behind the top spot. Jeez, that was a mouthful. <laughs> and the women's swimming and diving team also came up short on Saturday, falling 129 to 160. And despite the loss, explorers Emma Smith and Olivia DiStefano came up big and grabbed a pair of event wins for LaSalle. Smith took first place in the 500-yard freestyle thanks to a time of 5 minutes and 3.39 seconds. However, she didn't stop there. Smith went on to take first place in the 100-yard individual medley with a time of 1 minute and 0.32 seconds. Next up, blue and gold freshman DiStefano took on the 100-yard backstroke and won in 58.18 seconds. And in addition to that, the rookie placed second in the 50-yard backstroke with a time of 27.63 seconds. The LaSalle men's tennis team fell to a 0-5 record after being shut out for the fifth straight game. Facing Bucknell on the 31st, junior Brian Balico and sophomore Meredith Christian were the only two explorers to win their first set, but lost sets two and three. Balico and Christian teamed up again in doubles play, losing their doubles match 6-3. And looking to turn around a dismal 2015-26 campaign, the women's basketball squad just traveled around the corner to St. Joseph's on the 30th to close out the month of January. LaSalle played well in the entire first half, leading by five at the end of the first quarter and 13 by the end of the half. However, the break in action made a huge difference in the game. The Hawks came out in the third, firing on all cylinders, outscoring the Explorers 22-7. LaSalle fought back in the fourth, regained the lead just over eight minutes to play, but couldn't hold on. 
allowing St. Joe's to close out the game on a 17-6 run en route to a 64-55 win over the Explorers. The team ex uh, returned to the court on Wednesday, February 3rd to take on the Rhode Island Rams in their hometown of Kingston. Always a close game between the two teams, LaSalle trailed by six heading into the locker room at midway point. They would never achieve a total to come back with the Rams, outscoring them 30-26 to in the second half. Despite an impressive 21-point performance by junior Makaya Owens, the Blue and Gold were still unable to grab a victory, falling 62-52. to The loss marks 10 in a row for LaSalle and puts their overall record this season at 3-19. and And over the past week, men's basketball continued its string of losses against, the two, of, against two of the top teams in the A-10. First, it was time for a rematch on the road against Dayton, the Dayton Flyers on Saturday, January 30th. After the LaSalle upset win against the top, 15, top 25 ranked team in the nation, the win looked like a spark of hope for the rest of the season. As the Explorers took to the court for the first half, it looked like we were on the road to a, yet another upset for Dayton. LaSalle went on for a 10-point run to start off the game, with Washington and Price leading the team. However, Dayton answered with a soul-crushing 24-6 run that took them to the half. Explorer momentum halted as the Flyers took the second by storm. LaSalle weakened the deficit to three with 11 to play, but at the final buzzer, the score was 59 to 44. Dayton, despite the attempted comeback from LaSalle. Yep. And next, the Explorers headed back to the goal on February 4th for a tough game versus VCU. So, as soon as the matchups on the court developed, it became very clear that the Explorers were completely outsized by the Rams starting five. However, the Explorers rebounded strong in the first half, capitalizing on their quickness. Scrappy play by Rohan Brown and Cleon Roberts also helped the Explorers in the game. Then, there was Melvin Johnson. Number 32 for VCU, Johnson totaled our outside defense, raining threes from beyond the arc, going six for eight in the first half. It was devastating. Then, um, on the other hand, we had Johnny Schuler also stepping up with 10 points and some tough play in the paint. And now, even with a deficit of 16 going into the second, the Explorers attempted a comeback by going on a 10-0 run, but they were quickly outpaced and outsized as the half wore on. You know, it got sloppier and sloppier as they took complete control and the game started to wind down. But on the bright side, Lamar Stukes finally got things moving by scoring a career-high 17 points. And take a look at this clutch play where he managed to just lead with, the, with his weak hand. Oh, tight. But anyway, um, this, is, this brings the record to 5-15 with seven consecutive losses. Yikes. Uh, rough stuff for the Explorers. And after all those recaps, it's time to take a break. But when we come back, we'll give you the weekly awards. And after that, my interview with Track and Field's Bradley Hoover. Life is hard. Effective consent is simple. Do not make hookup decisions if you won't remember them. For more information on sexual assault, visit nomore.org.
All right, so welcome back. We have our weekly awards coming up. So, Gomez, take it away. Yeah, sure. Uh, our first headline is Olivia DiStefano. She's a freshman swimmer, and she continues to dominate the pool for LaSalle as she nabs her fourth Rookie of the Week honors uh, for the A-10 conference. DiStefano won the 100-yard backstroke in the Explorers meet at UPenn and was just .21 seconds behind her first place in the 50-yard backstroke. Then, some other great news. Top LaSalle runner Morgan Zeckley earned recognition at the 112th Annual Philadelphia Sports Banquet. Uh, the banquet honored the sophomore on February 1st thanks to her back-to-back -back A-10 championships wins in the past two cross-country seasons. Uh, Zeckley is the first woman in conference history to win consecutively in her freshman and sophomore years. So congrats to uh, Zeckley and Stefano as well. But now heading back to men's track, I got the chance to sit down with one of LaSalle's top distance runners, Bradley Hur. Take a look. I'm your host for today, Jake Smolinski. I'm sitting down here with one of the most consistent runners on the men's track team. Bradley Hoover, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. All right, we're going to start this off right away. Uh, I got to ask, you've been placing a lot of top tens this season, um, coming off of indoor and everything. What is going on? You are now one of the upperclassmen. You, you're taking control. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think uh, at the kind of start of indoor last year, I uh, had a couple good races, ran a lot of PRs and kind of carried that into outdoor and I think outdoor was a real kind of like wake up call for myself uh, just kind of like wow like you, you know, you're a good you're a good runner you, you have a real potential here uh, let's keep this rolling and I kind of took that outdoor season and used it towards my season in cross and now into the indoor season and just kind of been on a roll ever since that outdoor season I'd say. And so you're primarily also a long distance runner, 5,000 meters, right? Yeah, th uh, 5,000 meters uh, outdoors, indoors, kind of like changing it up a little bit. There's a 3K indoors, so I'll run that a few times. Yeah. Uh, but you also just mentioned, though, cross country, indoor, and outdoor. Your life revolves around running, uh, <laughs> especially now you're entering your junior year here at LaSalle and everything, or yeah, you're in your junior year here at LaSalle. How has this started to feel like, like you've been running now basically continuously for the past three years. Where are you at? Like, where am I? Um, well, I mean, I ran, I ran, I'm trying to think how many years did I run? I think I ran three years fully in high school. So by the time I graduated, I kind of had a good grasp on everything, how to kind of like balance school and balance running. Um, I think, you know, where I'm at right now is just coming in being like an upperclassman and really kind of taking that weight on my shoulders, being a good leader for the younger guys, being a good leader for the guys on the team. And um, I think personally, uh, I've kind of fed off of the other guys as well. We've had a great group of guys, I think a lot better than the guys we had um, maybe my, my last year going into the year. Um, and I've kind of fed off of them and used that as well. Yeah, and also you're kind of seeing that like in your races, it's you guys are competing so heavily in like the 5,000 especially and with I, I can't think of uh, the runner's name but just in the last meet you guys went five and six in uh, in, in the placing. Yeah uh, that's a uh, that's one of our uh, transfer students he's from Shippensburg that was uh, Nick Libby um, and he's he's really kind of turned I think Cross was uh, he had a pretty good season in Cross and I think ever since he got back he put in some real hard work uh, in uh, over the over the break and he got back and he was ready to roll and he's really having a good one and then um ian barnhill as well um definitely on a roll and then, then we got some uh some of the shorter distance guys uh we got dave ozarski and andrew gorsuch um just to name a few who are kind of on a roll as well yeah it's it, i can't even imagine like all the pressure that you guys have kind of going on with that but i also gotta just to kind of bring this back a bit now uh you're not exactly from the greater philadelphia area are you no, <laughs> no i'm uh i'm from herndon virginia it's about uh, like three and a half, four hour drive, depending on 95. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so how has been the the process of kind of assimilating to LaSalle and getting used to how the explorers do things, like how like the track teams are compared to what you were doing back in high school? You know, like what, what has been like the transition been like? Yeah, I mean, um, when, when I first started looking at colleges my junior year, I wasn't even looking to run in college. Um, I think my senior year in high school was really where my high school coach kind of like sat me down. He's like, look, like you should try to run somewhere in college. And um, here is one of the places that he 
mentioned because um, his uh, college roommate Dan Ireland, who was um, the coach my freshman year, yeah. um, was yeah, like I said, he was his roommate in college. So he's like, oh, why don't you look at LaSalle? And I took a visit here, and I ended up loving it. Yeah. Um, and I know coming coming from her in Virginia, I didn't really I didn't know anyone coming up here, but uh, we have a really great team of guys. Um, everyone just kind of meshes together, no matter where they're from. We've got kids from as far as Texas on the team. <laughs> Um, but everyone just, you know, seems to mesh real well together. Yeah, and seriously, like what, what kind of times are you looking for, though, in that situation? Um, so I, I'm definitely going to focus on the outdoors. Um, fi- or, excuse me, focus on the 5K outdoors. Yeah, yeah. Um, and to get into that meet, uh, it kind of depends. They take, like, the top, like, 42 times, I think, in the region. Mm-hmm. Um, so to – uh, make the regional meet you usually need to run about a 14.10 to 14.15 um, 5k um, and the Penn State the Penn State race I li- uh, both Nick Libby and I ran Libby ran 14.36 and I ran 14.37 so um, just kind of like taking that time and building yeah. off of it and hopefully really cranking it down to that 14.10 getting us to that regional meet that's crazy like that's pretty close and cons- like uh, thinking about how different indoor is compared to like outdoor when you finally start to really like get the warm weather actually in like yeah, it's, a, it's a lot easier to I think personally I think it's a lot easier to run faster outdoors I mean indoors you got all the all the turns and stuff and you got the oh, yeah. nasty try recycle there oh heck yeah I used to run uh, the classic 200 meter uh, the sprints over on the tracks back in Buffalo it was <laughs> it was messy like, I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie I may have actually uh, slid off the track and into the wall at one point, but um, I really don't want to discuss that. Yeah. And I guess for, my, for one of my final things uh, for this interview, uh, we're currently sitting in the conference room where like Coach G spends like most of his time. There's some pretty nice art hanging up on the walls. Yeah. Um, yeah, some uh, I was, very- I was admiring it uh, <laughs> earlier when I came in here. <laughs> it's a nice picture right there. Yeah, I, I know I'm digging the haircut. It's uh, pretty classy. Yeah. Yeah, man. Jeez, I, it looks like you have really like solidified your place here on the LaSalle track team. Yeah, I hope so, and I'm sure some of the other guys <laughs> in that, I know some of those other guys up there have already done that and graduated, and I'm kind of looking to hopefully fill their shoes. Yeah, well, you know, you've got a couple more seasons to go and everything. I uh, wish you the best of luck. And, yeah, that is it for On the Sidelines. Uh, back to the desk. Well... Thanks, Jake, for that. That was really, really informative. It's great to see that Bradley York, who has been just come up from the ranks from being just a supporting act to really kind of yeah. being a leading man in the, in the, yeah. on this team. Uh, so we're really excited to see what he's going to do for the rest of his career at LaSalle. But uh, there's plenty of other LaSalle sports action in this upcoming week, so let us highlight the games ahead. So first, men's basketball will welcome Rhode Island to the GOLA on Saturday, February 6th. When LaSalle versus URI last year, we had a surprise visit from uh, actor Bill Murray, who was the father of the Rams assistant coach. Will we see him again? We don't know. Well, anyway, the men will then head south to North Carolina to take on Davidson on Wednesday, February 10th. And on Sunday, February 17th, women's basketball will take on the VCU Rams. But then the Blue and Gold will verse UMass on February 10th. Both Massachusetts and LaSalle are 0-9 for the A-10 season. Rough. All right, and men's tennis will try to make something happen when they travel to Jersey City to tee up with St. Peter's. Now the Peacocks are currently 0-3 for their season to LaSalle's 0-5. Track and field head north to Yale to complete in the Geigengack Invitational on February 5th and 6th. LaSalle will face Lehigh for the second week in a row. We have Rissa Del Preto to discuss the men's team in this week's Marquee Matchup. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Marquee Matchup. I'm Marissa Del Porto, and I'm here to tell you about the latest matchups in men's track and field. A new season has started for these men, and boy, has it been a competitive one so far. In the last Invitational at the Lehigh Covert Classic, the Blue and Gold had 16 of its members compete in eight events, in which 12 of the men were placed in the top 10. One of the key players that were featured in that top 10 was Justin Guerre. The sophomore finished in third for the 200-meter dash at the Penn State National Invitational and ran a time of 21.85 seconds for fourth place out of 23 events in the event. Guerre has been a top contender in the past events and is sure to be a key player in the upcoming Geigengack meet on the weekend of February 5th. 
One other player who was featured in the top 10 was senior Brendan Robertson. At Penn State, Robertson ran at a time of 8 minutes and 29.44 seconds in the 3,000 meter run for 22nd overall. The time was a personal best for him, an improvement of nearly 9 seconds from his previous mark. The long distance runner is continuing his success for LaSalle's track program and will be essential at Yale. Another key player who is sure to be a contender at Geigengak is sophomore Nicholas Smart. Smart also placed in the top 10 at the Lehigh Covert Meet when he ran the 800 meter in a 1 minute and 54.22 run for 14th place out of 26 entries. Smart also placed third in his team when he ran 0.57 seconds off the top time. An efficient runner like Smart is going to be a much needed competitor in the field. The blue and gold team have been doing well so far in the past meets. However, if the men want to continue with this streak, they need to continue to focus at the task at hand. Many athletes compete in multiple events, and while that should be great, sometimes the double duty wears down the stamina of the runners. But make sure to stay updated with the latest news on men's track and field as they take on the Geigengak Invitational on February 5th and 6th. For Sportsline, I'm Rissa Del Puerto. Go Explorers! Thank you, Rissa. And when we come back, I give you my predictions on whether men's and women's track can actually turn out a successful weekend on Picks of the Week. So, stay tuned. Oh, hey, bud. We're, uh... Where are you headed? Uh, I'm just going to hang out. With Gary and Todd? Yeah. I've been meaning to ask you, is there any drinking going on in this crowd? No. If any of your buddies ever pressure you to take a drink, just tell them you promised your dad you wouldn't. I'd do anything to keep you safe. OK, I will. I hope this is working. I promise. Love you too, Dad. They really do hear you. For tips on what to say, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. Can I go to the sleepover? Lucy, I want you to promise me something. If there's any drinking, I want you to say, no thanks, not my thing. Mom. I promise you, your real friends won't care. Deal? I promise, Mom. They really do hear you. Did you pack your toothbrush? For tips on how to start the talk, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. A public service message from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. It is time for yet again my favorite segment every week because it's all about me. It is picks of the week. Oh. Anyway, we after last week, I'm kind of um, smarting just a little bit after uh, I was optimistic. I tried to have a Dayton uh, LaSalle upset number two, two in a row, and sadly now I owe Tyler Harper from Sports Talk $5, and I hate my life. Anyway, um, we're going to start things off, though, with track and field at the Geigen Gag Invitational. For my picks this week... I'm going to look for some like continuing success for the long distance runners. It's a really competitive field, mm -hmm. but we are having some serious, uh, like just really some guys stepping up, top five finishes, top ten finishes week after week. And uh, as we just got to see with like Bradley Hur, they are like almost there in terms of really like coming back to the top of the A10, like the golden years of Nico Greco, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like so. I'm thinking, though, top five finish, though, for Bradley Hoover, and I think he's really going to start shaving down to his time of 14.10 in the 5,000. That's basically what's going to be uh, what's going to be the key to that one, you know? Oh. So anyway, this takes me to number two, and this is where things are going to get a little bit sad. Men's basketball versus Rhode Island on the road. You know, it's a 12 and 10 team, but we also, that's like probably the closest we're going to get to like an easy opponent. Uh, an actual matchup. Yeah. <laughs> Um, after VCU this week. Which was just, it was sad to watch. That first half was good, and then watching that second half was just, it was painful. So I think, I, I think you're right. I think we're not going to see much from this game. If, I, if we are, it's going to be a good game. Yes. This could, be the, this could potentially be like the turning point. I'm just not seeing that happen at the moment. You know, as we were talking about, we're invested. We're so invested. I, I mean, at this point, I can't even cry anymore about it. Same. I just hashtag jaded. <laughs> oh my! 
yeah, that's basically how we all feel here in the La LaSalle TV studio. And finally, number three, I'm saying women's basketball <laughs> lost to VCU. It's going to be symmetrical. We just lost to VCU with the men's team right on the other half of the women's. We have Jasmine Alston really doing like her best, like really plugging away. Same with Makaya Owens. But there's just something's missing in how they're like communicating. Mm -hmm. um, and, and VCU's women's team is also monstrous. They are brutal to play against. I honestly think they just pick apart teams like us, <laughs> um, just piece by piece. It's rough, you know? And you've I, been there at some of these games this season. Yeah. And it's just. It's, it's rough. And yeah, like you said, Austin and Owens are both really, really strong individual players and can really contribute a lot. But it, it's, it's just not happening for this team. Yeah. And it just kind of brings us back, though, to basketball and just in general. There is a serious lack of momentum. Both of our teams are on huge slides. And one of those things is we keep on saying year after year, like, oh, we will be, we'll, we'll pull ourselves together. But I'm really hoping that something happens and we can really just turn these things around. You know? Well, on that note, that just about wraps it up for us this week. If you can't make it out to see the marquee matchup, be sure to tune in next week for our coverage. Keep up with this weekend's other sporting events by visiting GoExplorers.com and by following us on Twitter at SportslineLTV. We post game updates and sneak peeks into the upcoming show. So, also check us out on Facebook at Facebook.com slash TV. We welcome you to send us your thoughts and suggestions about the show on either website. And for Rissa and our Sportsline team, I'm Anna Gomez. And I'm Jake Smolinski. Shout out to Andrew Yemen's mom, mom. Thanks for joining. We'll see you at the game.